This is the, the Red River. It's uh, one of the main rivers that flows right through North America. But this is the Alexander Docks uh, in Winnipeg. So in early August 2014, uh, August 8th, Sunday afternoon, there was a gentleman here walking with his kids and he spotted what he believed to be a, a body just uh, probably about 50 meters uh, north of the fence here and maybe 10 meters uh, out into the water. And uh, he saw what he believed to be a human arm and uh, he alerted uh, the police that were in the area. And what they recovered was a body of a female wrapped in a, a bed sheet, a duvet cover, and had been weighed down. The remains were of a 15-year-old Aboriginal girl of Sakin First Nation, Tina Fontaine, who had been reported missing for nine days. The homicide unit entered what has become a long and complicated investigation. The murder of this child, and let's not forget she was a child, has shocked and outraged the, our community. And I think that outrage has resonated across our nation. Death sparked a march through the city streets and renewed calls for a national inquiry to provide answers. First of all, our, our hearts go out to family and friends of Tina Fontaine. Uh, the entire uh, First Nations and Aboriginal communities across the country are, are reeling with uh, this particularly poignant and, and tragic uh, tragic loss, but it, it comes on uh, a compounded loss of, of so many missing and murdered over the years. Tina's family is not the only one to struggle with loss through violence. It takes your mind off everything. and I mean, I think of my sister every time I bead, but it's not a bad way. It's not the, the ugly part of what happened. It's beautiful memories of her. At the Kane Kanichik Center in the north of Winnipeg, sisters Jerry Lee Pangman and Kim McPherson have a Thursday evening ritual. Yep, one beat at a time. <laughs> we always make jokes about like beating, you know, like beat it like Michael Jackson, you know, beat it or one beat at a time, like one day at a time. <laughs> Just <yeah. laughs> really nerdy jokes. <laughs> Jerry Lee and Kim are just two among dozens of women who come to the center each week which offers support to indigenous families affected by violence, homicide, or who have missing family members. So we used to be when we were four, like in our teens, like yeah. 12, 13, we used to be at home, right? And same with our sister Jennifer. Jennifer, a mother of two, was murdered in British Columbia at the age of 41. Many families feel that not enough is done to support Aboriginal communities facing these crimes. When our sister went missing, there was an actual error on her identity. They actually they mistakenly put Caucasian. We decided we're just going to leave it as Caucasian because she'll get more attention, you know, instead of changing it to Aboriginal. The thing with a lot of Indigenous families, it's not just one tragedy, it's multiple tragedies. Like, I, yeah. I've heard of one family where there's been four or five women that have gone missing or have been murdered. In the quiet street of this neighborhood, there is no peace. Bernadette Smith has been searching for her half-sister, Claudette, for more than seven years. On July 24th, she was with my sister Tina and they had said goodbye to each other at a crosswalk on Selkirk and, and Charles. 
my sister went one way, my other sister went the other way, and that was the last time anyone seen Claudette from our family. With someone who's missing, you never really know, right? It's always the wondering, you know, phone rings, and it's like, is that the call to let you know, or doorbell rings, and you know, so you're always left constantly wondering. You're always left, you know, driving and driving past the field and thinking, you know, could she be in that field? Like, it's very difficult. Like, it's it's not something that um, you can move on and kind of heal because you have no answers. Like, there's nothing. What can you find, like... We live in such a big country where there's so much field. Manitoba has the highest population of Aboriginal people among the provinces, and many are extremely concerned for their safety. Well, even as an adult woman, I'm very careful when I walk the street, and you know, because people just, like, there's a lot of creepy people out there. I have a daughter. She 21, and uh, every time she goes out, is she gonna come home? Like, you know, it, it's, call me, call me, let me know where you are, or I'll, or I'll call her. You know, I'm constantly worrying about her, and it's, um, it's, it's scary. You know, my sister was an Aboriginal person. She was a woman. She was someone who know, had a known um, drug addiction, and she also had a criminal record. So we felt all of those things played a role in, you know, the police not taking action right away and the response we got with, you know, she'll turn up, she's an adult, she's out there somewhere. There are 1,183 police recorded incidents of murdered and missing Aboriginal women and girls in Canada since 1980. A figure so high that this monument was commissioned in Winnipeg to honor their memory. Victoria Tauli Corpuz is an independent expert from the Philippines tasked by the United Nations to develop a national inquiry with the Canadian government. Well I, well, I was very encouraged by the response because it seems they are really sincerely interested to pursue the case, to address the case once and for all. She'll be working with three female Canadian ministers appointed to design the inquiry which will address why Aboriginal women and girls in this country are so uh, at risk. Uh, these three women have uh, led uh, the uh, setting up of a truly national inquiry uh, into this tragedy to provide uh, justice for the victims, to provide healing for the families. Some have linked this violence to the long-term impacts of racism, sexism, colonialism, and the devastating impacts of residential schools on Indigenous men, women, and communities. But I think the more important thing, and this is what I stress with them, uh, that they include Indigenous women who have really suffered from this problem because they will be the ones who can say what, is, what, what can be done. Women like those in Winnipeg. And with the inquiry underway, new evidence provided by the members of the Winnipeg community led to an arrest. Today, I'm informing the public that Raymond Joseph Cormier has been charged with second-degree murder in the death of Tina Fontaine. Cormier, 55 years old, had been traced by Winnipeg police to Vancouver and has a preliminary trial hearing scheduled for May 2017. This was wrong. This little girl should not have been killed. We've all let her down. Like at every level of society has let this kid down. She had so much potential like every other kid in the world and this is what's happened to her. But the way the community pulled together, the entire community pulled together to conclude this investigation, we couldn't have done it without the people of Winnipeg. Well, 15 year old body you know, wrapped in a garbage bag, disposed of in the Red River, like, she's garbage, you know, it was just, I think it woke our country up, you know, I think people started to, to see that that could be their daughter, right, that that could be their sister, that could, you know, they now see to, started to see themselves reflected in that, and that it could happen to them, and that, you know, I need to do something about it, I need to get involved.